There's 140 million Americans living with a chronic disease, estimating U.S. healthcare costs to be three trillion dollars by the year 2030. There's 400 million Indians living with a chronic disease, with an estimated cost to the India economy of 6.2 trillion dollars by the year 2030. In the world, 1.5 billion people living with at least one chronic disease that we know of. And unfortunately, we're going to know more and more and more of these people. We know these diseases: heart conditions, respiratory conditions, diabetes, kidney failure. And we know these people. They're in our families. They're in our workplaces. They're in our communities and our cities. Unfortunately and sadly, they're continuing to grow. For these people to live safely and normally in everyday life, they have to wear a diagnostic monitoring device that alerts them, their families. Or their doctors of say worsening heart condition, changes in their blood glucose levels, or changes in their breathing conditions. But these these devices are bulky. They're invasive. They don't work half the time. They're uncomfortable and embarrassing. You don't want the world to know that you've got a sick heart, or sick brain, or sick motor functions. Even for all of us, we can relate to this. When you went to your doctor for your last annual checkup, and they may have checked you. For heart monitoring purposes, to see if you have complications down the road, it's not a very pleasant experience. Doctor will ask you to take your clothes off. You may or may not know that person very well. They smear your chest with sticky gel and put 15 different taped wired electrodes on your body. May give you rashes, and then they ask you to do weird movements like move your arms or run on a treadmill to elevate your heart rate so they can check the signal quality. And if you're a man like me, South Asian descent, you got to get your chest shaved before they do all that. So you're going to get blackheads, maybe on top of the rashes. But that's just an experience that we only have to deal with temporarily on a one-year basis. But the patients with chronic disease have to endure that every single day of their life. But that's not only the first problem that they need to deal with. The more important problem is what happens when their body hair starts growing back underneath those sensors. Or they sweat during the day. Or they sweat during at night. Or they want to do something basic, like take a bath, a shower, or move excessively. The sensors of those monitoring devices are compromised due to these actions, and sometimes even fall off the body. So diagnostic yield of these monitoring devices decreases, or the ability to diagnose conditions over longer periods of time decreases. And that's what makes monitoring chronic diseases so so difficult. But these are the problems about patients that we know, patients that have been diagnosed with a condition. And as tech entrepreneurs, we often get stuck in the trap of building products for people that we know. But what about the 50 million Americans that are uninsured or on Medicaid, or the 360 million Indians that live below the poverty line? They're just trying to live. It's three billion plus people in the world that will never see a doctor regularly like you and I do. And so it's no secret that mortality rates for children and adults in almost half the world's population is really, really bad. What do we do about this? How can we actually address this problem for those that need it and those that we don't even know have it yet? Can we give a solution to the patients that are diagnosed with disease, and can we give a solution to the underserved? That can help them find who these patients are, and is it too crazy to think that one technology can do both? Five years ago at Nanoware, when we started, we started with that mission in mind to accomplish that feat. Founded in 2014 in New York City, and now opening West Coast office in the Bay Area, Nanoware is a connected care and machine learning platform for digital diagnostics. Built upon first of its kind cloth-based nanotechnology. Really loaded physics sentence, I know. But cloth-based nanosensor technology is very, very cool. It's first of its kind. The invention is billions of vertically standing nanopillars while they're contacting the skin, and those billions of touch points over each centimeter of surface area allows us to get very narrow and specific on the on the exact signals that we're looking for. And that expansive surface area mitigates against the typical sources of noise that we mentioned about all those other monitoring devices. Body hair, moisture, sweat, motion artifact are not affected. Do not affect the signal quality of these sensors at all. 
the, the signals that we can capture are more than just one signal of a monitoring device. We can do electrical signals, hemodynamic signals, acoustic signals or sound signals, biochemical metabolites and activity signals just from basic contact of the skin with, again, a very, very friendly patient uh, experience using cloth. So this is the ground floor of our technology. It gives us really, really good data into our technology stack. We use a customized Bluetooth uh, uh, solution to transmit the data to our patient mobile facing app and our physician portal. From here, the de-identified data gets pushed to our cloud platform where we do different machine learning algorithms for those alert diagnostics of each individual state. I won't talk too much about the machine learning uh, infrastructure, even though that's the most exciting, but I will mention that if you're a machine learning play, you've got to have great data. You can call yourself AI, but if you've got a great, if you don't have a great data source, there's a little bit of hogwash potentially in that statement. So we spent, before we even got to machine learning, years making sure that our data pipes were best in class in the world of remote monitoring. We built our supply chain infrastructure and intellectual property from the ground up and our FDN quality management systems from the top down. So what do we do with this tech stack? We stubbornly went out with probably the most complex chronic disease state of our time. It's tricky because it's actually a combination of multiple chronic disease states. You get there a different way. Patients get there from having sleep apnea for years, from having diabetes, complications with a bypass or with stents. Uh, and this is the disease that we call heart failure. If you don't know the stats, it's a pretty scary disease. 10 million soon to be diagnosed in the States, 35 million worldwide already diagnosed. And the complication yields from the heart muscle being weakened or unable to relax. And this yields pressure building up in the lungs. And by physics, your body compensates for that pressure by flooding the lungs with fluid. So these patients wake up in the middle of the night and they can't breathe. They rush to the hospital, some of them seven to 10 times per year. With those millions and millions of hospitalizations, it's no surprise that this is a hundred billion dollar annual problem. The solutions that are out there, the current standard of care, don't work because they've never addressed all four stakeholders in the conundrum equally. Patients, if they're living with this disease at home, it's gotta be something so easy for them to use, something so daily to their activity, maybe as easy as putting on their underwear. Physicians or doctors or care management, can we give them reliable alerts that they can trust? No matter what your smartwatch advertiser or marketer tells you, the data from that smartwatch is not reliable. Governments and reimbursement, are we actually identifying the low socioeconomic status patient that are driving a lot of these healthcare costs? In hospitals, are we giving them the outcomes clinically that they are seeking to reduce their bed space and get their patients discharged? Nanoware created this with the four stakeholders in mind with our first product, SimpleSense. It's a sash-like undergarment that captures and algorithmically scores seven different metrics off the body after 15 minutes of testing in the evening and 15 minutes of testing in the morning. And what it does is it algorithmically soups electrical signals, hemodynamic signals, sound audio signals, and activity signals, sending a daily score to care management or families weeks in advance of symptoms showing up where that patient would need to go to the hospital to get their lungs drained. Nanoware has really, really recognized the progress that we've done over the last five years because I'm very proud to announce that just in the last two months, we launched the SimpleSense product clinically in two hospital systems in the US. The market's recognizing the fact that we're the only game in town with this cloth-based nanosensor technology. We spent a lot of time scaling this novel technology from a supply chain standpoint. 13 patents filed, four awarded, great IP portfolio. I mentioned that we have the FDA approval as the first and only cloth in the world. We graduated Google's machine learning and AI program. We were one of seven med tech companies to go at that six month program. And that's when we built our machine learning infrastructure 18 months ago. And again, we just launched clinically uh, two months ago. But what I think is really exciting about where we are now is the global provider networks and the Fortune 100 companies that are recognizing these milestones and choosing us over the thousands of different companies that have sensors and push data into the cloud. And while we're over the moon about that progress and heart failure in, in particular, just imagine what a cloth-based digital diagnostic can do in the entire world. How far can that reach actually get? 
Imagine when you take a drug, or if you and I get the flu, if we're prescribed a 20 milligram pill to take for the next 10 days, it's not really the right prescription for me and you getting the same disease. We sleep differently, we eat differently, we react to drugs differently. But what if you had an armband with nanotechnology that could customize your dosing and make your prescriptive therapy individual for yourself? What about an applications outside of healthcare, monitoring our men and women on the battlefield, or our first responders like our firefighters and our EMTs. You know, governments want to know how their soldiers' bodies are reacting at elevations of 10,000 feet in the air, or extremely cold temperatures, or how their bodies react when they've been in the field for 24 hours with no sleep. But can you really put a bulky monitoring device underneath their heavy gear or their heavy firefighting outfit? What if you had an already enabled army vest with cloth-based nanotechnology in that can remotely monitor those soldiers at any minute of the day? And then most importantly, as we talk about the patients that we don't know, what about the underserved? For example, in the villages in India, fetal monitoring or infant monitoring in those underserved areas. In many of those places, women and teenage girls, they're not gonna be comfortable taking off their clothes in front of a stranger that they don't know to monitor their baby with an invasive vaginal probe. But what if they had a sheet with cloth-based nanotechnology that they could just wrap around their belly in the comfort of their own home, around their families? If this sounds galactic, it's because it is. We can't do incremental inventions in healthcare and transform this chronic disease epidemic that we have. We've gotta be bold, we've gotta be convicted in our long-term vision. And we have to see it through no matter how long it actually takes to prove and implement. So if this moved you tonight, we ask that you please join us on this journey in improving our communities, strengthening our families by offering comfortable, easy to use, affordable and reliable digital diagnostics to the world. Thank you.